Welcome to this session, which is titled Overview of Healthy Living. We start with a definition of what is health. Health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease. This is the definition provided by the WHO, the World Health Organization. So it means that being healthy is more than not being ill. And there are several factors that contribute to health. One of the most important is the behavior of the individual. So that word, complete physical, mental, and social well-being, meaning this means that health can be defined in, di in different ways. When we say complete, it means by implication that health may be, the state may be incomplete. So we are going to talk more a little bit about this. Now, what are the characteristics of health? It refers to a state of well-being that is complete that is whole or full. It means that some individuals may health may be half, it may be 50 percent, it may be 30 percent, it may be 90 percent, but we want people to live at level of 100 percent wholeness. Okay? And health has several components. It has the physical component, it has the mental component, it has the social component. Another characteristic of health is that it is dynamic. In other words, it is changing. In the afternoon, you may have a sense of complete wellness. By evening time, you feel that you are not completely well. So health is dynamic. And all persons, regardless of their age, their sex, their race, their ethnic group, have a right to it. Every individual who is living have a right to health. Finally, another characteristic of health is that it is more than absence of discomfort, pain, disease, or infirmity. So these are the characteristics of health. So the key message here is that we want everybody to live a life of complete wellness. What are the determinants of health? I divide, I've divided this into two components. There are structural factors and there are individual factors. When we talk about structural factors, we talk about the environment which the individual lives. We talk about the income, the education, and policies. Okay? So if an individual is living in an environment where there is a lot of violence, it is going to affect the health of the individual. If the individual does not have sufficient money, he will not be able to go to the hospital when he or she is ill in order to be able to pay for service. When the policy in a particular environment is not healthy, it's going to affect the overall health of the individual. For example, if the individual lives in an environment where there is no policy that forbids smoking in, in, a, in public places, so the individual becomes a second-hand smoker. So those are structural factors that determine health. But at the level of the individual, there are also lifestyle or practices, that is, the behavior of individuals that affect his or her health. So when we talk about determinant of health, we talk of these two components, the structural one and the personal or the individual. Let's define what behaviors or lifestyle are. Behaviors and lifestyle, what really are they? So lifestyle or behavior simply refer to what people do or what they fail to do. For example, some of you are currently you are listening to this lecture via Zoom or via other technologies. Other people are absent. They are not attending the class. Okay? Both those of you who are listening and those of you 
students who are absent, both of you have acted. You have behaved. So when we talk about behavior, we talk about what people do or what they fail to do. But this is important with respect to their health. Okay? It's important with respect to their health. And we are going to give plenty of examples later about what people do or what they fail to do as it relates to their health. Behaviors are also referred to as habits of individuals. Lifestyle or behavior are very important because they contribute to health, disease, and quality of life. The behavior of individual can either add or decrease a person's years of potential life. As individuals who are born here in Nigeria, the life expectancy of, of us all is around 60. We wish it to be much uh, older, but that's just the reality. So but what individuals do can enable them to either reach this 50, I mean 60 years, exceed it, or not to reach it at all. For example, we talk about the use of seat belt. The use of seatbelt is important because in the event of an accident, that individual will not be flung out of the car. Instead, he will be pinned to his seat and it will limit the severity of the impact of the accident. But some people choose not to use the seatbelt. In the event of an accident, such individuals are thrown out, they have injury, head injuries and they die. So the individual, irrespective of the age, may not reach his or her full potential. So using that example of the use of the seatbelt, enable me to explain what I mean when I say lifestyle can add or decrease a person's years of potential life. So anyone who uses the seatbelt in the event of an accident have a tendency to survive that accident and experience less severity than someone who do not use a seatbelt. The use of the seatbelt is not going to prevent an accident from happening. Let me clarify that. However, in the event of an accident, it can limit the severity of the impact of the accident. So let's move on. Why is lifestyle important? Why is it important? The importance of lifestyle. Every disease whose cause is known has a behavioral component. Every disease whose cause is known has a behavioral component. Let's use the example of HIV. The cause of HIV, the cause of AIDS is HIV. In other words, the individual needs to be infected with HIV in order for it to develop into the disease called AIDS. So once we already know the cause of AIDS to be HIV, then we are in a, in a better position to know how HIV is transmitted through behavior. And there are four behaviors that have been identified as a means through which HIV is transmitted from one person to the other. The first one is sexual behavior. The second one is breastfeeding. The third one is sharing skin piercing instruments such as blade, needle. And the, third one, uh, the fourth one is transfusion of infected blood. You will see that each one of these behavior, individuals have ability to control and change or modify them. So once you take a disease and you know the cause, there are behavioral components that are associated with it. And in health promotion, once we know the behaviors involved, then we are in a position to educate people in order to prevent uh, this behavior from leading to disease. So I have here examples of behaviors that are associated with diseases. For cardiovascular disease, that is disease affecting the heart, the behaviors that lead to this disease include smoking of tobacco products. When I say tobacco product, I mean this includes cigarettes, it includes uh, chewing of uh, the uh, tobacco product or sniffing it, okay? Also, lack of exercise and use of alcohol are other behaviors that are associated 
with this uh, disease. When you talk about the cancer affecting the lungs, we know that smoking of tobacco product is the behavior that is related to that disease. I've already talked about HIV AIDS. Uh, so we know those behaviors that are associated with this disease. Road traffic accident, the use of alcohol is a behavior that is contributes to road traffic accident. If the individual takes alcohol, is under the influence. All the precautions that the individual ought to take, he will not take it because he's under the influence of alcohol. Excessive speed is also a, a behavior that is associated with accident. And we also know that the non-use of seatbelt. With malaria, the behavior involved is not sleeping under uh, um, net, not sleeping under a net that has been treated, or a line of a grown wheat around the building. With cancer of the liver, we know that the excessive use of alcohol are the behaviors associated. So, for any disease whose cause is known, you can always identify the behaviors. So, once you identify this behavior, we are in a position to conduct education for people to adopt to prevent these behaviors okay so what is the key message here if individuals avoid lifestyles that are associated with diseases they are likely to live a, a long healthy and productive lives if individuals avoid lifestyle that are associated with diseases they have a tendency to live long healthy and productive lives i hope you get that now let's look at the challenges of university life one an individual is uh, just been admitted like many of you you have just been admitted to university of Ibadan. there are some challenges you are likely going to face as students who have been newly admitted into the university the first one is the stress of completing all the processes involved. The registration is very cumbersome. You have to go to many offices, trying to get obtain form, trying to get people to sign these forms for you. So it's a lot of effort. You are also meeting new people. You are making new friends. Sometimes some people experience loneliness. They feel homesick because they are missing close friends and family members. Remember, you have to leave your home to come to the university, to stay in the hall of residence. And so that presents itself a challenge. So living and adapting to life in a new environment is, can also be challenging. So there's other, the other challenge is finding suitable accommodation on campus. Not all students who are admitted can find accommodation on campus. So some people have to live off campus. And that means finding accommodation in places like Agbo and uh, other uh, locations. It can be challenging finding the money, finding a suitable accommodation to live off campus. The other challenges are that you share a room with some completely new people. Many of you may be used to stay in your own room, in your own room in your various uh, homes. But when you come to live on campus, you are forced to share accommodation with people. These are completely new people who have their own ideology, their own ways of life, their own uh, uh, characteristics. The workload is also very heavy. You must attend classes, you must uh, meet a minimum uh, attendance of 75%. You must move from one location to the other to attend classes. You must take all assignments. So this can be very, very challenging. And some, there is a pressure to become romantically involved because you will meet people, particularly the females, people who approach you that you should be friends. 
For some of you, this is the first opportunity you will be experiencing this. And that pressure can be very, very overwhelming. There's also the issue of uh, not having sufficient money to meet all your needs. Your parents or guardians are giving you money, but there are all, uh, always new needs and uh, uh, requirements which you may not have planned for. Then there's also the challenge of coping with new freedom and responsibilities. For many of you, this is the first time you will be completely on your own without the control of parents. For those of you who live in boarding houses, your, while you are there, your teachers are responsible for your activities. They direct you what to do, what, where to go. But when you come to the university, you manage your own time yourself. There's no teacher who will run after you and tell you what you are supposed to do at different points. So this can be very, very challenging to some people. There's also the pressure of joining clubs. Many clubs will make overture to you, inviting you, and you can be confused which one of these clubs will be suitable. So the university environment for a first timer, for a new student, can present a lot of challenges. And uh, part of the reason why we are organizing this course is for you to be aware of these challenges and how you can cope with them appropriately. Now, there are three major lifestyles or behavior that you need to adopt now that you are a student of this university to stay healthy. The three things you need to do, you do them well. The first one is you should eat well. Second one, you should rest well. And the third one, you should exercise well. So we we'll take each one of these. Eat well, rest well, exercise well. Let's talk about eating. Well, your body is the temple of God. You need to nourish it by eating appropriate food. So you should nourish your body by feeding it well. I want to read a quotation by a 10-year-old boy who said, if you don't take care of your body, where will you live? So eating well is part of the ways by which you take good care of your body. So what is good food? First, you should eat three meals a day. Don't miss meals. And breakfast is the most important of the three. Ideally, you should have your three meals. But breakfast is the most important of the three. Okay? So don't miss them. Breakfast is the foundation of all the meals. Secondly, you should eat more food that are baked or steamed or grilled and less food that are fried. Okay, I hope you get that. More food that are baked, that are steamed, or grilled. And less food that are fried. Anything frying is not good for the, the heart. So I should eat less of those. You should eat a lot of more fruits. There are many fruits that are available. Banana, oranges, pineapple, apple, and vegetables. And Nigeria is blessed with different types of fruit of different seasons. And during their season, these foods are relatively inexpensive. You should also drink plenty of water, a glass of water in the morning after getting up and right before going to bed. So you should drink plenty of water. And water is so good because it ensures you have sufficient liquid in your body. So please drink as much water as possible, as much as possible. So good food, limit sugary and caffeinated beverages and don't eat junk food. Don't eat junk food. We want you to eat food that are low in fat. This include fish, chicken, lean meat, and low dairy products. All these are food that are low in fat. And so we recommend that this is what you should strive to eat. Now, a number of don'ts when it comes to eating. Please don't start to smoke, chew or inhale any tobacco product. 
If you have not already started, please don't start at all. If you are not smoking right now, don't start it. Okay? If you are currently smoking, quit. We have already said smoking is a, uh, is a behavior that is associated with many diseases, including uh, lung cancer and heart disease. So, if you, if you are not currently smoking, please don't start. If you are smoking, quit. Don't start at all or stop heavy drinking of alcohol. Don't start at all or if you are currently drinking, reduce heavy drinking. If you are not currently, don't start to take psychoactive drugs. By psychoactive drugs, we mean drugs that affect the mood, such as cannabis or uh, Indian hemp, cocaine or heroin. Please don't start. We know that some people believe that they use this drug to handle pressure. It's not true. We know that the university environment for new students can be challenging. Don't resort to the use of cannabis as part of strategy to handle stress. The damage that the use of psychoactive drug does to you is everlasting. And so we, di we discourage you from, from, from getting involved. If you are already taking any one of these behaviors, please seek help in order to stop or quit. Okay? Now, let's talk about rest. Now, I will be very spiritual and religious. If you look at Genesis chapter 2, and I believe there will be equivalent of this same in other religious books such as the Quran. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 2, God rested. God, God, uh, God did that to show us good example. God is not a human being that he should be tired, but he rested after all his effort in creating uh, the earth, creating human beings. He rested. The purpose of that rest is to show us good example. Jesus Christ too, in Luke chapter 8 verse 23, also rested. He too was a godlike person. He was the second person of the Godhead. But they show this example so that we too can take a cue from it and rest. Rest is very important for us. Adults, and I believe many of you have already attained the age of adulthood, need an average of seven hours of sleep every day. Children need more hours. So try and ensure you have sufficient sleep every day is part of rest. And it is okay to take a nap whenever you have the opportunity. When you are feeling like napping, go ahead and nap. After taking the nap for 10, 15 minutes, your body is going to be refreshed. So it's okay to nap. I do so even here in my office. Take some time off your routine. Visit friends, travel, go on vacation if you have the opportunity. Adequate rest rejuvenate the body. So don't miss your opportunity of rest. Very, very important. What are the consequences of not resting well? The first consequence is that your body will be stressed. Okay? Your body is stressed. What does it mean to be stressed? You are stressed when you are tensed up, you are anxious, you are worried, you are nervous. And if the stress is so high, you are not able to control it, it results in sickness or disease. So, we understand that uh, being a new student is stressful, but we are also encouraging you to also rest. Because it is by taking adequate rest that you'll be able to attend your classes, listen attentively, understand what the lecturer is teaching, prepare for the exam, and pass the examination. So, rest is very important. You cannot overemphasize this. Now, I want to ask some questions. These are rhetorical questions. You, you can answer these questions in your own mind. Okay? Are you experiencing stress now that you are going through life as a student on campus? We've already said that not having sufficient rest increases the risk of stress. 
Are you always tired even after sleep? Are you easily angered? Do you have difficulty concentrating? If your answer to these questions are yes, you may be stressed up and you need to relax by taking sufficient rest. And we know that stress limits your body's ability to prevent disease. When you are stressed, your, your immunity will not be able to work well and prevent diseases. So, I'm encouraging you to take sufficient time to rest, to avoid stress. Now, let's look at exercise and how you can do this well. According to WHO, we all need at least 30 minutes of physical activities every day before we can reap the full benefit of exercise. So 30 minutes of physical activities every day is what is needed for us to get maximum benefit from exercise. So physical activities make us feel better. It makes us stay, have a healthy weight. It helps us to prevent diseases, including heart disease, high blood pressure, obesity, that is excessive weight, and even diabetes. So what are the examples of physical activities that you can participate in? You can walk. You can jog. You can climb the stairs many times, up and down. So you don't necessarily have to go to the gym. If you have the money, you can go to the gym, but walking is part of the exercise. Jogging, climbing the stairs, even dancing is a form of exercise. Okay? So we are encouraging you to, to exercise more and to do it well. Now, other examples of physical activities. You can walk, walk around the campus as frequently as possible. There are those of you who live in our hall and have lectures in the uh, uh, faculty of law, or faculty of science, I mean, social science, faculty of uh, pharmacy, that's sufficient uh, distance to cover. Okay? If you have a car, you can park your car and then walk from uh, one particular location to the other. You can walk to the restaurant instead of sending someone to buy the food for you. You can climb the stairs multiple times, I've mentioned that, rather than using the elevator or the lift. You can ride a bicycle. You can wash your car. You can rearrange your room. You can dance. Anything that will make you to walk around, moving back and forth, is a form of exercise that you should engage in. Okay? You can do the lawn. Uh, you can mow the lawn in your house if you have uh, such opportunity. So any activity that you make you move, rather than sitting down in one location, are the activities you are recommending as physical, uh, as the exercise that are important for you. Now the nine extra, other extras. I also want you to love safely and carefully. What do I mean by that? Abstain from sex, and if you have to, have sex, please use a condom. We know that use of condom reduces the risk of transmission of HIV. It reduces the risk of pregnancy. But of these two, I recommend abstinence because when you abstain, you don't have to worry about being infected. You don't have to worry about becoming pregnant. Okay, so abstinence is very important, and we are asking you to abstain just for a short period of time. You will not abstain forever. Okay, so we are asking you to apply abstinence, which is the more real, uh, assured. You have one hundred percent assurance against infection, against unwanted pregnancy. We want you to take sufficient clean, fresh air every day. Don't spend all your day in your hostel or classroom. Walk out, take fresh air. It's very important for you. We want you to wash your hand with soap after the use of toilet. And we are in an era of coronavirus. Once you leave your hall of residence, 
you should wear your face mask. Once you are going to an environment where you are likely to encounter people, we want you to use your face mask. The use of the face mask acts as a barrier against the uh, sharing of droplets between two persons. And you are to maintain your social distancing and use your hand sanitizer. So that is a message relevant for this era of coronavirus. We also want you, want you to wash your hand with soap when you leave the hospital or other public places as soon as you get home. It's a good practice both for coronavirus prevention and even prevention of other uh, diseases. Learn the habit of hand washing. Once you get to your house, do that frequently as much as possible. Brush your teeth in the morning and the last thing before going to bed. So these are part of the nine extra things that I, re I am recommending for you. Use seat belt, even if you are not the person driving. I've already mentioned earlier that the purpose of using the seat belt is to prevent severity of an accident. Use of seat belt will not prevent accident from happening, but it will prevent, it may make a difference between whether you survive the accident or not. Very important. Keep scheduled appointment with health workers. If you have to go to Jaja, the doctor says you should come. Please attend your appointment. It's very important. If you are on any medication, please take them as prescribed. Take them as prescribed in order for you to get well. You also need to assert yourself. Do not allow anyone to cajole or force you to do what you really do not want to do. Okay? You need to assert yourself. If you are not interested in a relationship with someone, tell the him, him or her politely you are not interested. Let nobody put you under pressure to get into a romantic relationship when you are not ready for it. Those are the nine extra things. I want to summarize now and conclude. One, nourish your body by feeding it with appropriate food. And we have defined what appropriate food is. Eat more fruit and vegetable to enable you, your body fight diseases. And we have said earlier, fruits are readily available in Nigeria, different types. Right now, oranges are readily available and they are cheap. So try and get that as part of your diet. Drink plenty of water because it helps your body. Follow God's example by taking sufficient rest every day. Rest is also important because it prevents stress, which is harmful to your body. And strive to take 30 minutes of exercise every day to maintain healthy weight and even to prevent stress. So, in conclusion, it's good to know, but is knowing sufficient to make a difference? It's one thing for people to know, to have the knowledge about what it takes to stay healthy. It is a good starting point for many of us to know. However, if you don't act or put into practice what you know, it's not useful. So the new knowledge you have gained from this lecture, we want you to act on them. It is when you act on them that you have made my day, so that my, all my effort is not in vain. So I want you to act on the knowledge that you have gained from this lecture today, and it's going to be well with you, and you will live a healthy, productive life during your studentship in the University of Ibadan. So I thank you all for listening. Uh, if you have questions, this will come up during the, uh, the tutorial lectures that will be organized later. There will be people who will be available to answer any questions that you may have. On that note, I say thank you all and God bless you.